So good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Brang Wen, for giving uh, me the opportunity to present some uh, results. Uh, this work was uh, conducted in the in, in Ra in uh, the Auvergne region. So uh, this work, the, the results of this study were obtained by uh, Marie Fretin. Marie is uh, preparing her PhD work under the supervision of Bruno Martin, uh, Anne Ferré and myself. So I will present part of the results of her work. And I apologize because I am a microbiologist and so I will try not to bother you too much with uh, Buck's name. So please. So as uh, Bruno just uh, told you, the cheese sensory properties uh, can be influenced by the nature of the animal feeding and uh, in particular the color of the curd can be uh, influenced by the composition of the feeding uh, and pasture cheeses have much yellower curd than maize silage uh, cheeses, please. So this uh, can be partly explained by the composition of milk con and its content in uh, beta-carotene. As regards the texture, we also found that uh, cheese prepared from pasture, uh, from milk of cows fed on pasture, uh, are less firm than uh, cheese prepare, prepared from milk of cows fed on maize silage. And this could be related to the compositions of milk in fatty acids and also to the degree of proteolysis. Finally, as regards the flavor, uh, clear differences were observed between cheeses made on pasture or maize silage, and they are less marked for cheese made on hay or grass silage. And the uh, differences in flavor have not been fully explained yet. They could be related to milk fatty acid composition, enzyme composition, and plant secondary metabolites composition, as Bruno told you. But, please, uh, in addition to milk biochemical composition, <laughs> sorry, uh, the milk and cheese microbiota is also involved in the, in the development of uh, cheese sensory properties through uh, different uh, activities which are uh, related to proteolysis and lipolysis. So, please. So, we have on one side, the complex milk and cheese matrix with its complex biochemical composition. On the other side, the complex milk microbiota. And uh, you should know that above 300 species were identified in raw milk and that one raw milk can contain above 40 different microbial species. In addition, all these species uh, uh, have different enzymatic activities that works on the cheese matrix, milk and cheese matrix. So, please, in between of these, we wonder what's the role of, of uh, milk fat, uh, milk composition, and if there could be interactions between microbiota and uh, milk fat to explain cheese sensory profiles. So the question we would like to address in this work were how can we explain the effects of pasture on cheese? Is there a role of milk fat composition? And are there interactions with the microbial dynamics in cheese? So to address this question, we have set an experimental design which is based on two groups of cows. Uh, which were fed either on, uh, gray, on uh, grass, on mountain grassland, or fed on maize silage. So after three weeks of uh, adaptation, the, the, the cream uh, was analyzed and the milk fat composition was determined. And this analysis showed that the uh, maize cream uh, was characterized by a higher amount of saturated fatty acid and uh, it, this was correlated to a higher amount of palmitic acid, as Bruno told you. And uh, uh, 
the grass cream was characterized by a higher amount of polyunsaturated fatty acid associated to a higher amount of oleic acid. So, prior to cheese making, uh, the milk from these two groups of cows was separated into skimmed milk and cream. So the cream was uh, pasteurized at a quite high temperature, so 78 degrees for 10 seconds, which uh, really decreased its, its uh, uh, level in microbial populations. And, please, so the skimmed milk from uh, the grass, the grazing system, was uh, separated in two vats, and the cream from each uh, cow feedlot was added either to each fat to make cheese. This. So, using the same skimmed milk with an identical chemical and microbial composition and the two creams with their different fatty acids compositions, we made uh, cantal type cheeses using the same technological process, the same ripening conditions in the same cheese-making facility. And so this, uh, the whole experiment was repeated three times to make three uh, raw cheeses each and three pasteurized cheeses each. Okay? <laughs> Please. So after uh, 150 days of ripening, the cheeses were analyzed by a panel of uh, trained assessors and the results are shown here for the raw milk cheeses. So the results showed that uh, maize uh, cream cheeses were, fir were, were um, more firm and less melting, and this confirms the role of fat composition on cheese texture. As regards the aspect and the, the color of the curd, uh, the color of the grass cream cheeses was uh, more intense, and this confirms the role of milk beta carotene on color. Finally, as regards uh, the flavor, the differences were not significant, and uh, this, this uh, suggests that the fat composition has a minor role in cheese flavor. And the same results were obtained with the pasteurized cheeses. But if we look at the rind aspect, we found differences in this aspect, and uh, maize cream cheeses had a higher spot quantity and a higher spot silence, and uh, the differences were uh, less important with pasteurized cheeses. So this, this uh, in, uh, conducted us to, please, uh, ask questions about the development of the ripening microorganisms because you must know that the development of the cheese rind is related to the development of a ripening microorganism on the sur cheese surface. And so we wondered whether the differences in cheese aspect were related to modifications of the microbial balance of the rind. So to assess this, please, uh, we, we, um, we uh, conducted analysis using uh, high-throughput DNA sequencing to analyze the microbial diversity of the cheese rind. So briefly, uh, the cheeses were sampled on the, in the core and on the, and on the surface after 30, 90, and 150 days of ripening. Then, from the cheese samples, the total DNA was uh, extracted. And from this DNA, we uh, targeted specific genes to identify either the bacteria or the fungi with specific genes. And uh, the genes were sequenced using a technology which is called the MySec. And for each cheese sample, we could get around 40,000 sequences that we, which, which make a huge amount of data uh, that we analyzed using uh, bioinformatic uh, pipelines. So um, the objective of this analysis was to get, to associate a microbial species name to the sequences, 
to, fi to final, uh, finally have an abundance table which summarizes the number of sequences associated to different microbial species in each cheese sample. Okay? <laughs> okay. So, what the, all this showed was that the microbial balance of uh, raw cheese rinds changed during cheese ripening. And if we look at the major bacterial phyla, we showed that during the ripening, the proportions between these different bacterial phyla changed. And we found an increase of the proportion of the phyla, which is called uh, actinobacteria. And uh, this was expected because among actinobacteria, you will find very important bacteria involved in ripening, such as Corinebacteria, Arthrobacter, um, what can I, uh, Micrococcus. So this was, import this was important changes during ripening. So we also look at the fungi part of the ecosystem. This. So regarding the fungi, we also found very important changes in the, micro in the balance between the species during ripening, especially concerning the four dominant species. Uh, among these four dominant species, three of them, the one Sporandonema casei, Debaryomyces anseni, and Penicillium fuscoglocum, those three species were added in the cheese as ripening starters, and they were dominant on the cheese surface. So we, we, we found a very important uh, uh, increase of the proportion of Sporandonema casei during ripening in blue, and this species is considered to be the main responsible of the uh, formation of, cant of a spot on the, ch the Cantal cheese rind. Please. So, using the whole abundance data of bacteria and fungi, we analyzed using um, a statistical, da uh, statistical uh, tool, which is called partial least square discriminant analysis. And we tried to see if we could distinguish maize and grass cheeses during ripening based on their bacteria and fungi profiles. So after 30 days of ripening, we found that cheese made from uh, my, maize milk and grass milk were different, di di distinguished along the vertical axis and that was the same after 90 days we could still dis clearly distinguish the cheese made on maize or grass, and the difference were a bit less clear after 150 days. Please. Okay. So, what all this uh, means about bac microbial balance, please. So, associated to differences uh, on cheese, uh, we found that the abundance of uh, specific dominant populations varies in cheese rind depending on fat composition. So this graph shows um, the different microbial species that allow to distinguish cheese made from grass cream or maize cream. At the bottom, you have the microbial species that contribute the most to distinguish the cheeses, and at the top, the microbial species that contributes the less. Please. So, cheeses made with uh, maize cream were distinguished from grass, grass uh, cheeses by the presence of several species, such as lactic acid bacteria, uh, such as Lactococcus lactis, ripening bacteria such as Cocuria, and several species of fungi, in particular Penicillium fuscoglucum, which is added as a starter. On the other side, 
grass cheeses were characterized by a uh, different balance of fungi, in particular the Baryomyces anseni, which was also added as a starter, and uh, several gram-negative bacteria, such as Enterobacter or Cerasia, and ripening bacteria, such as Yanella and Brachybacteria. Thank you. So to conclude, with this study, we found that milk fat, milk fat composition affected the texture and the curd color, but it did not significantly affect the cheese flavor. Anyway, in practice, other milk constituents than milk fat vary according to feeding, such as the microbiota, the milk enzymes, and this was not tested because the same skinned milk was used for all cheeses. Please. But the milk fat composition clearly affected the rind aspect and the microbial balance of the rind. And this could be, please, could be related to oiling off of unsaturated fatty acid on cheese surface or also to antibacterial effect of certain free unsaturated fatty acids. So, to go further with this work, we will analyze the impact of milk fat composition on potential co-occurrences or exclusion patterns of microbial species, which means which are the microbial species that occur together or uh, on the contrary, would not be together in the cheese, depending on the origin of the milk fat. Also, we will investigate uh, the expression of microbial enzyme genes involving proteases, lipases, esterases, or involving proteolysis or lipolysis phenomena in cheese. And uh, this could be the role of starters too. So, just to show you that these uh, approaches of uh, microbial diversity profiling using metagenomic approaches can have different applications. This, these approaches allow to monitor microbial ecosystems development, including the starters in milk and cheese, and these approaches must be combined with data associated to technological biochemical data, and all these data should be analyzed statistically together, and this would help to identify maybe microbial associations that would be best adapted depending on farming practices and cheese process parameters, and also maybe to identify technological drivers to promote these microbial associations. So in the late, late future, we hope this could uh, help to tailor microbial consortia to milk biochemical compositions in order to get the desired cheeses. Thank you.